congratulations on the film. Thank you. Absolutely loved it. Tell me about what it was for you when you read this script and this character that kind of spoke to you and you thought, I have to, I have to try and get this. Yeah, it was... I, it, honestly, it sounds so odd to say it out loud, but it was something that, even though I, it was nothing like my life, it was probably the thing I'd read that I'd related to most ever. Uh, so it was a piece of writing that I'd related to most out of anything I'd ever read. Fiction, non-fiction, scripts, not scripts. Um, so when something affects you on that level, <laughs> you're going to want to get it. Um, and I, I gave it a fair go and thankfully I'm, I'm, I'm here now and I was um, blessed with the opportunity to, to be able to play this beautiful character. And you get to work with Gurinda, who's a, a yes. wonderful storyteller. And yes. this one touches so many different things, but the core of it is this father-son yes. love relation, you know, relationship. I mean, what was it about that particular relationship that spoke to you? And, and when you were playing it, how how easy was it to kind of to do that? You know, I'm very lucky in that you know my family, my parents, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are very, very, very supportive in a very sort of active way. Um, in the way in which you know the fam, the father in the film really isn't as much, but that's just because of a culture clash that they have. Um, but I think what is particularly sort of uh, sort of prevalent and sweet about the film is that you know it, it is culturally up, uplifting to those people. You know it points out their pit, pitfalls, and, and you know at the end of it it uplifts them. And I thought that was something really sweet. And you know it's based on Safraz's book, Greetings from Barry Park, and that book is about his relationship with his father. And so for Safraz to now have eternalised his father in a positive light on screen for the rest of the time or for the next hundred years, however long we keep going to the cinema for, um, is amazing. It's really like truly sort of touching. I mean, Javid, the one thing I loved about Javid is that he has this really infectious energy yes. that, that yes. the people that are around him, despite whatever race or whatever politics they might have, get absorbed by it. I yes. mean, was that something when you read the script you thought, this guy could change, not change the yes. world, but could change people's opinions in some way? There is a sort of wide-eyed openness and receptiveness and I want to do this, so I'm going to do it. I want to do this, so I'm going to do it. And that is what young people, I think, in general have. The character is slightly younger than myself. Um, I think what's so interesting about young people is that you look at them and they are, uh, they are sort of slightly less touched by self-consciousness. Um, whereas when you transition to an adult, that sort of creeps in and you become self-conscious and you want to make yourself small, especially in Britain. Um, but... But I think that's something that Javid, when he finds Bruce, you know, initially he's sort of self-conscious, this and that, finds Bruce and he goes, blimey, I'm going to sing this stuff at the top of my lungs, I'm going to run about the streets of Luton and I'm going to do this because it feels flipping good. You know what I mean? So I think that's what is the sweetest thing about it. Congratulations on the film anyway. Thank it you. It is wonderful. Um, I, as a child of the 80s, I was, I was struck by how much you were able to recapture, um, obviously I'm not from Luton, but in terms of the actual aesthetic. I mean, how yes. difficult was that to, for you to pull off? Because I imagine you didn't have all the money in the world to, to do it. Was that a really no, difficult I had, thing? I had a fantastic production designer, Nick Ellis. And Nick also did uh, Bender Light Beckham with me and Bride and Prejudice and some other movies of mine. And Nick normally works in commercials where they have pots of money. So he's able to like beg, steal and borrow <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, but Nick has that aesthetic. It was his time as well. And he just did a great job of... Uh, pulling together like the cars of the period uh, all the you know the graphics we wanted to go for a very graphic feel so the shooting was very graphic um, the design was graphic the houses you know where Javid lives it's lots of lines very max headroom if you remember you know like that kind of look uh, and colors as well we kept it you know sometimes we had sort of bright blues and yellows popping but other times it was Luton so it's kind of dreary but then when Bruce comes into his life we had plaid shirts you know, in red. Um, so, yeah, a lot went into the feel and look of the 80s because you had to really believe, you know, it was that time and not today. Yeah. And Athena poster shops, which I remember from, from back in the day. Yes. You spent so many time in there. You ca captured that amazingly well, I did thought. You? Yeah. Did you? Like, did you see the manageress of the Athena shop with the big... The big uh, Whitney Houston wig. Yes, yeah. Oh, that was me. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Put that in the Busted. trivia page of IMDb. <laughs> that was my cameo. I was like, I am. If I'm going to make these '80s movies, I need to do an '80s look. <laughs> and there was this amazing Whitney Houston wig. I said, I'm having that. And that was <laughs> in the Athena shop. You have this amazing um, knack for casting as well. Obviously, back with with Kira and Palmeida back in Bend It Like Beckham, and now this group of amazing young actors. I mean, how difficult was it to find them? Did it take a long time? But did you know they were right almost immediately? 
Um, yes, you know, I've got, I have an instinct when I meet someone for the first time and then I do bring them back two or three times, but my initial instincts are always good. And I like actors. I do like working with young actors, you know, because they're, they're just fresh. They're starting out. They don't have any egos, <laughs> uh, but also they're just wanting to learn, you know? And so it's a very pure relationship and my job is to take this fresh talent that often has great instincts and put it out into uh, a cinema performance, you know, and that's what I hope I've achieved with Vivek and Nell and Aaron, um, is to make them feel like, you know, proper cinema actors. Um, and they're very ably supported by everybody else in the film too. So, uh, so yeah, like young actors only work so long as they do have the support of more experienced actors around them. Gurinder's very good about um, communicating lots of difficult subjects, um, which would really maybe put quite a few audience members off the film if they weren't communicated in such a in such a clever way. She uses humour to communicate them, which has really made the script stand out to me. And it being 2019, I thought <laughs> these issues probably needed to be spoken about because um, we're encountering a lot of the same problems, really, at the moment. I mean, your character is 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 kind of intrinsic to the story in the sense that she's one of the people that's actually standing up for them and their, their everything else. I mean, what was it about her that spoke to you? Because she's, she's a very strong-willed, very, uh, you know, she's got a lot of confidence. She's passionate, she's energetic, she's angry, she's exactly like I was when I was her age, <laughs> which is really what attracted me to playing her, um, because we were very similar to each other. Yeah. This is this is great love story as well, going through. Uh, it's really sweet and really, really charming. Was, was that an easy kind of relationship to grab between the two of you, or did it take a bit of work, or was it it was it was so easy <laughs> I mean we spent so much time together I guess it would have been really difficult for it not to have been easy but no we hit it off he's he's like a brother now which is really lovely and kind of weird to think about because um, we kiss all the time when we watched it for the first time me him and Gorinda when it got to the kissing bits we were going ah! <laughs> no, it was, it's, it's, it was very easy. He's great. So, it was very strange watching it as well as a kid from the 80s, showing my age here, when there was all these little things like Athena, the poster shop, and all these like yeah. Walkmans and everything. It was crazy. For you, I mean, stepping into that, that age, did you have a favourite kind of garment or a favourite device or something that you took away and thought, oh, well, I might keep all of this? I never allowed any devices that my generation grew up with. We didn't, we weren't allowed computer games. We're still not allowed computer games and I'm 20. Um, I wasn't allowed a phone until I was like 15. So really, in terms of devices, no, I went outside and played a lot, but I loved, <laughs> I had, <laughs> I don't think I can say that actually. <laughs> I, I, I really can't say it. They've told me specifically not to say it. Um, I, I loved, I loved old fashioned music, if you're asking about my music taste, to be honest. Um, when I was a tween, I think it was Queen that was my favorite band. And I don't think that's really changed, to be honest. They have a bit of a renaissance now, aren't they, after, yeah. the, after the movie and stuff. Um, just finally, I mean, for audiences who are, you know, 12, 15, up to 80, I mean, what are you hoping they take away from this? Because there's so many themes that are so prevalent still so now. Many themes. I hope it teaches them to, or it reminds them to look after each other, even in times of uh, pressure and in times when you're being split up by other people or when other forces that are more powerful than you are trying to divide you. It's all about unity, really. I hope they, they take that away from it. And I hope they like Bruce Springsteen. I hope it opens their eyes to him. Yeah. It's been surreal, man. Um, it's the first project I've done like this. It's the first feature film I've done. Everything else before was, was TV. So now the fact that the first film I've done and... We're being flown out to different places and we've got people coming out to, you know, from different countries and different backgrounds saying how much they can relate to the story. It's, it's unreal. It's, it's a beautiful feeling, man. Yeah, Tell me about this amazing friendship between the two of you in this, in this movie because Springsteen brings you together and then you become, become friends. I mean, what was it like as actors kind of working with each other and kind of playing off each other? Because it, it feels like a friendship that would in film worlds would endure for, for many many years do you know what i hate the guy i hate the guy a lot it, uh, you know he, he just he, he drives me mad no, just, <laughs> nah, uh, no do you know what it, i think the similar thing with uh, me and vivek uh is the same with roops and javid uh safras and amolak who that what their real names are when we got to meet them it was you know in the diner scene that's what that you see us in we actually met them on that same table uh, with the same menus, you know, everything was just the same and we met them. So um, I think the same with them too, the fact that 
they're so different, but to them it's like the super glue of their friendship is Springsteen. And in a way, I think it's kind of the same with me and Vivek, because if it wasn't for Springsteen, I wouldn't have met him and I wouldn't be, you know, we're, we're very good friends now. Yeah. But we're complete opposites, literally. Always <laughs> away, isn't it? Always <laughs> away. Uh, I'll, let me speak to you about uh, Gurinda. I mean, she's a fantastic filmmaker who's, who's so adept at making amazing stories that touch race and politics and so many things. But it's the story that always works so, so well. I mean, what was it like working with her and seeing her work and bringing a story to life? It was surreal, uh, you know, we, but being a fan of her before I even started acting and then being able to work with her and, 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 and you know, be such a crucial part of the film, it was, it was just, it's a surreal feeling I, I can't put into words. Um, you know, my mum my was more excited than me. She, she, she was a huge Corinda fan and before I went into the audition, she's like, you better get the role. And I was like, all right, no pressure. So when I got the call, it was a nice feeling to tell her, you know, I bagged it, I, I got it. So. Um, but you know, just being on set with her is a nice feeling. She's, she's a great collaborator. She listens to her actors. There's like a mutual respect thing going on. So yeah, it was it was nice to work with her, and hopefully I'll be working with her again soon. And also, I mean, it's, it's set in the 80s, but it, it, as with many of her films, it transcends that time and that place, and people can see themselves in it from from every different generation. I mean, are you hopeful that audiences, young and old, see themselves in this and take something away in that sense? Yeah, that's that's one thing that kind of attracted me to the role the most. The fact that it's speaking to so many generations. It's speaking to uh, my parents generation my grandparents generation my generation and hopefully you know the generation after me because it, it has a timeless message and it has a relationship of a father and son yeah it has the music element throughout but it's not musically driven it has a it shows a relationship between a father and a son it shows a relationship between uh, two best friends it shows a relationship between a Muslim boy who's grown up in a strict household and you know gets a white girlfriend so it shows so many so many different things and I'm hoping that people people take a lot away from it you know tell me about your character she's she's kind of a struggling mother but she wants her son to kind of live his dreams and everything else I mean for you did that kind of touch touch some of your own life or was it something that you were discovering as you were going along? Um, I think I think it's uh, yeah I think it does touch on my life I have two children and you know obviously they're still quite young but you can already see that they're going to have their thoughts and their views are going to be slightly different to mine and as they get older it is something that I will have to kind of face and, and work with you know and obviously my parents were um, immigrants they came to this country so I kind of saw both sides I saw how they struggled and you know the whole kind of uh, finding their feet in a new country with no language and all that. So I think it was all very uh, relatable. Yeah. And I mean, Gurida is such an amazing storyteller. She touches you know, race and politics and everything else. Why do you think she's so adept at doing all of these things and, and transcending, you know, whether it's a story for, for Asians, whether it's a story for white people, whoever, she's able to do that as a story. Why do you think she's so good at that? Um, I think she's good at it because she really is passionate about everything that she does. You know, she really believes in trying to um, kind of make a society which people will talk about these things and try and find the balance because everyone wants to have a sort of good life. Everyone wants to be, you know, no one wants to be struggling and no one wants to kind of face racism and, you know, and, and they're things that we have to talk about. So... Are you hoping that audiences, what do you hope they take away from, from this film? Because, it, again, it touches so many different um, stories and so many different things. Um, I think people are going to take, you know, lots of different things. I mean, it's very funny. It's, it's emotional. It's a real tight bond family, you know. And I think people will, will take away that all families are the same. They all want the same thing. Everyone wants to be happy and, you know, get on with things um, and live live a good life you know tell me about the genesis for this is for you as an actor how did you get involved what was about the story that spoke to you classic audition process it all came through i was unbelievably excited to see the names that were on that script um yeah i mean i have told everyone else man i just get involved with comedy projects because of the, i think it's the way i look it's, it's either the ginger hair or the five foot six i don't know what it is but every time i just love doing comedy roles and this guy is, he's hilarious um he's yeah he's insane <laughs> he's, he's he's the guy in the film who's against Spring, springsteen in a, in, a, in a strange way he's happy to play some of the pop i'm a bruce fan i'm kind of like well i wasn't i am now obviously but during sort of training for this character, I was kind of like trying to stick with my original, which is, I don't know much about Bruce, and I don't think I need to just yet, because 
this guy hates Bruce. He's like, this guy hates Bruce. He's all about whatever's going on at that time. So it's plenty of time for that, I'm sure. Um, in terms of the, the story itself, I mean, it, it transcends so many different things and talks about race and politics and family and tradition. I mean, what are you hoping that audiences kind of take away from, from the film? I just think everyone should come see this film. It's so important. Like, it, it's just one of them really important films that's going to come out. Um, and it takes you through a whole roller coaster of emotions. Like, I, I watched this film, I, I laughed, I cried, I was, I was going through it all. So, uh, you know, if you've seen Gorinda's other work, you should know exactly why you should come and see this film. Yeah. Some man made David Beckham call as well, so... Yeah. Right? Like, that was a huge thing for me as a kid. So, seeing Gorinda's name, coming into work with her every day, it was surreal. I'm pinching myself even now, like, being here, man. This is... Wow. What was the kind of the early conversations with you and Gorinda, and how did, uh, how did it kind of escalate from well, there? I mean, I wrote the book, Greetings from Barry Park, in 2007. I then sent her the book. I said, what do you reckon? She said, I think we've got to work out what the story is. I went away and thought maybe Rites of Passage was the better, best way of doing it. So I came up with the story outline, sent it to Bruce. We started talking about it. Um, and, you know, that took about a couple of years to sort of just get that script together. And once we've got the script together, we then sent it to Springsteen to get his permission. And then, then, we, were, then we were cooking. I mean, I've, the, the film is, it, it touches so many different things. I mean, how, how difficult was it to kind of bring all of that together into the mix of the, of the story? Is that down to Gorinda, down to both of you? Or? I mean, I think it's a mixture. I mean, the films like this are team efforts, you know? So, you know, I was involved in writing the script, so that's the kind of basis of it. You then have the directing involved in it, but then you've got the actors who kind of bring it all to life. No one person is kind of responsible for something as complex as that, really. But I guess ultimately it's about the words and it's about the direction, isn't it? Yeah. And in terms of the casting, how, how involved were you with that? Because the cast across the board is just absolutely yeah, wonderful. I mean, the thing is, Gorinda's brilliant at casting, you know, if you think about her past record. So when it comes to finding Vivek and finding Aaron and all those people, you know, that was all totally her. Um, I was lucky because I knew Rob Brydon, so I asked him to be in it, and, and he did that. And I knew Marcus Brigstock, so I asked him. But that was just because I, have, you know, I just knew them anyway. But the central role, were, you know, that was Gorinda and that was her trying to find people who, and they had to be new as well, you know, so. How was it just kind of stepping back into into that era of the 80s and, and, and not just the setting, but also what was going on with the politics and everything yeah. else? Was that strange for you kind of stepping back into that? It was a bit strange. I mean, I remember one day we were on set and they'd recreated Luton Sixth Form College 1987. And I was like, oh my God, this is like really weird. I'm going back in time 30 years. And I got, it was so weird, I actually rang my old teacher from 1987 to say, oh, Mr. Ramp, I just feel like I've gone back to 1987. <laughs> It's really, I mean, meticulous. I mean, I, I remember seeing the Athena poster store and just being like, oh my God, this, the attention to the detail is, is incredible. I mean, when you saw it on the screen, you must have been delighted with just the, well, kind of the detail. I was on set. And also part of the authenticity is because, you know, they were consulting me a lot. So they were basically saying, could you send us photographs of what your family looked like? Could you show us photographs of what your house looked like? You know, my dad drove a sunflower yellow Vauxhall Viva. They found a sunflower yellow Vauxhall Viva for that. So that authenticity was kind of buried in the script, which was what they were able to pick on when they were making it. Yeah. I mean, are you hoping that the, um, this raises some more conversation or continues conversations about you know race and politics? Because it's it's you know it mirrors very much in 2019, given some of the tension, if you like. Yeah, I don't know if I really particularly was thinking about a race about conversation a conversation about race so much. I think it's really a conversation more about you know this idea about division, this idea that somehow people get defined as being different. And actually one of the lessons of the film is that we are bigger and the things that unite us are bigger than the things that divide us. And so when it comes to, for example, music, it crosses over nationalities and races and religions. It doesn't matter. And so Springsteen spoke to me from across thousands of miles. Similarly, hopefully this film will speak to other people across thousands of miles. And so that's the kind of, I hope, that's the lesson of the film. When Gruner told you the idea and sent you the script and everything else, what was your kind of immediate reaction? Well, when she told me the idea, I said, I love it and I get it. I absolutely get it and I want to do this and I know the way to do it and this is a film that people will want to see and people are going to want to be involved in. So I, I was, um, it was very, very clear to me from the beginning. And I said yes and then I thought, oh, you better send me the script. After I said yes and I thought, oh, that's lucky. The script completely delivers on the idea. And um, yes, I was... It's, it's emotional, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry. It's the kind of film that is totally worth getting out of the house and into the cinema for, which is very necessary now. And um, in order to get a film made and get it financed, you really have to ask yourself the question, why in the cinema, why not on television? 
and it was very, very clear. And watching the film is a very powerful communal experience, as we've witnessed, and we have had um, public screenings like in Sundance and whatever. The, the power of watching it with a large group of people is, yeah, is very evident. As a producer, it must, it's always great to get your film out there, get people to see it. But you, you started at Sundance, and you've been on very, very different, loads of different places across the world. How have our audiences from from different places kind of reacted? Are they all reacted in a similar way? Because it, it does transcend a lot of what it's about. It absolutely does transcend uh, the kind of Englishness. It's very, very rooted in Luton, unapologetically so. Um, it was fascinating to watch the film in Sundance because although Gorinda's intention was always to make a film that did transcend and that was universal, how strongly it resonated for America, I think, took us both a bit by surprise. You know, it's looking to an America where where a Pakistani guy arrives at the airport and is welcomed because he's coming to see Bruce, not sent away or taken into a room or whatever. It, it's a film that uh, obviously makes Americans feel very proud to be American at a time when people were really looked up to America. So it was amazing how it resonated with an American audience and how they laughed in places. You go, oh, okay, yeah. Well, it really spoke to an American audience. That was, that was interesting. It seems that it's been the case kind of across the world, but it's really in America that I've seen it in front of a large audience. And you think, wow, yes, it's even more universal than we kind of knew it was. Just finally, a quick word on Gurinder. I mean, she's made some amazing films, some amazing stories that really touch the heart and really touch color politics and race and everything like that. For you as a producer, what makes her so special as a, as a filmmaker today? Gurinder is a very special filmmaker because she's a brilliant storyteller and at the end of the day it's about the story and she manages to tuck their heartstrings in a very authentic way, really, really move people and make people laugh and actually that's the best thing in the, in the cinema, to go and to laugh and to cry and to feel very engaged with the story. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice.